Let's see. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's Christmas morning, <coughs> and I did the. <coughs> I did another uh, night in the car, and uh, I just kind of as I've been going along, it's it's just become like a little experiment. Richard Gear did a uh, a video, a movie. <coughs> which I'd like to uh, watch, <coughs> but he went, maybe I'll do that, I don't know, oh, my light didn't come on, oh, my power might be out, I'm not sure, i got a car light, but it's not on, I have to see, Richie Gear did an experiment, was trying to put that light on in the inside of the car. And in the experiment, <laughs> um, he uh, went, he kind of lived homeless in New York for a while. And to see how many people would stop and recognize him. Let's see if I can open this. <coughs> oh, it's on. And in that experiment, a lot of people did not recognize him on the streets in New York. <coughs> so it was kind of like an identification. And yesterday we talked about, I cheated last night in the sense, I, I was sitting in the parking lot of McDonald's because I could catch the free Wi-Fi from the parking lot. I had that idea. Because if you're sitting inside, that one's cold, by the way. <coughs> it takes a long time to upload videos. So I parked right by the door of McDonald's, and I got Wi-Fi. But I kind of feel guilty, you know, like, they didn't say nothing. <coughs> but the last video, which did not upload yet, hopefully I'll upload that today, was a Christmas Eve <coughs> incarnation. So I, I went in and I ordered a hamburger and salad. I needed some salad because uh, the fast food you eat in a car. Uh, but I learned, too, that if you put some food in the car, the things you can put, that'll be okay. And a lot of my friends, one year I was up here, and I think it was right around here. It's in the Walmart parking lot. But right around here, I saw it was, I saw a homeless guy. And uh, I asked him, I said, you want me to buy you some stuff? I invited him to go eat, like at McDonald's or something. It's a few years back. He said, you know, I would prefer, if you want, you could just buy me some canned food or certain food I could keep in my in a backpack. <coughs> Forget his name. I said, sure, brother. We went into Walmart, and I got him, like, hands of things that he could open. And my friends, he said, man, this is better for me because I can keep this with me and I can open them whenever I want. And I gave him a ride to a sea caucus and dropped him off. He was hitching, but he was pretty good. He was knew how to do it, backpack, good and all. A lot of my other homeless friends are not that organized. So I kind of thought today, um, this McDonald's ain't, uh, the Burger King is not open because Danny and the guy said uh, it'll be closed and they'll see me Saturday. So uh, I'm going to try and see if I can find a spot. When you're on the road, you stop at the rest stops. You could shave. You could use the rest stops. I do it fast because uh, I don't think you're supposed to really do that. But here, <laughs> I think if I were to stop in a restaurant like a McDonald's or something, I want to change. I took one shower since I left. It's not that long, but it was Sunday. I left. Today is uh, Christmas Day. I believe Friday. So I ate at the McDonald's last night just because I, I figured let me. And the battery was getting low on the laptop, so I figured and I I carried it in like when you open it up you don't want to shut it and use your lose your connection. I carried it in like you'd walking in your house from room to room with the laptop open. <laughs> So it keeps the connection. The identification <coughs> uh, 
uh, Christmas Eve video, <coughs> which I took yesterday. <coughs> I spoke on incarnation. Incarnation is God becoming man. It says in the book of Hebrews, we have not a high priest <coughs> which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, <coughs> that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <coughs> Jesus says Hebrews again, he took not on him the nature of angels, but the the nature of man, the seed of man, became man. <coughs> Incarnation, God becoming man. And people question. That's a question within theology or debates within different Christ uh, church movements. You've heard me discuss a lot. Was Jesus God? Yes, but it, that's a bit debated. You know, Jesus, when Thomas doubted, I'll do a quick thing on that. <laughs> when Thomas doubted the resurrection, because Jesus appeared <coughs> to the disciples, and Thomas is famous for the to be called Doubting Thomas, because when they said, we saw Jesus, it's in the Gospel of John, I believe, he's alive, he rose from the dead. And Thomas says, I'm not going to believe it unless I see it myself. So the next week, <coughs> Jesus appeared again to them after the resurrection. And Thomas was there. And Thomas said, "My Lord, Jesus said, go ahead, Thomas. Touch me. Put your hands uh, into my side. Feel the wounds. It's me. And Thomas responds and says, my Lord and my God. And in the New Testament, you read about times where, in, the, in Revelation, where John, the apostle, who is getting the revelations from God, these revealings from God, and at times he's going to worship, he's going to bow down, and the angels will say, don't do this, but we are prophets and servants like unto you. Uh, in the book of Acts, the same thing. When Paul, the apostles, do certain miracles, at times some of the other people are going to give them homage and worship as God, and it's always rejected. It's a, the apostles, even the angels themselves, are always rejecting that worship. But in the case of Jesus, when Thomas said, My Lord and my God, Jesus would receive that. He would not reject that. And, and also in the Gospel of John, uh, there's that interaction, that story where <coughs> Jesus says, before, they were always looking to Moses and to Abraham, his Jewish, his Jewish relatives, family, heritage. They're always saying, we are of, it. We are of Moses, Father Abraham. Jesus one time says, before Abraham was, I am. And it says, the Jews took up stones to kill him because he was making himself God. And when he said, I am, <coughs> I am comes, that term, when we read it in English, we're thinking, what's the big thing? But remember when God called Moses in which I taught in the Old Testament. And Moses initially uh, did not. He thought he would serve God, and he blew it, and he killed the Egyptian. And then he spent the 40 years in the wilderness, but then uh, away from his calling, and then God will use Moses, calls him again, sees the burning bush. Many years later in his life, <laughs> Moses is intimate. You know, he doesn't want to do the calling. He doesn't want to fulfill what God wants. He says, who will... 
who should I say, God, he's telling God, if you're going to send me back to Pharaoh and back to Egypt and to do this, how will I know they're going to listen to me? How will I know they're going to believe me? See, he lost all that self-confidence he had when he was younger. And he said, tell him, I am sent you. Now, I am, that even in the old King James, if I'm remembering right, it's in capital bold letters because it's the name Yahweh, okay? It's the name Yahweh, I am. So when Jesus, years later in the Gospel of John, said, before Abraham was, I am. You are not yet 50 years old. And he said, Abraham saw my day. And uh, he used the title, okay? So that's what we say, the deity of Christ. Now, in Hebrews, we read that he becomes man. God becomes man. And we celebrate that in this day. Emmanuel, God with us. Because... He had to become man. Sometimes people would ask, when I teach a lot on the liberal theologians, I did some of that this last few days and with some of the guys. Some turned away from the faith and belief in, belief in Christ because they began to see or come to believe that how could God punish somebody else with such a wicked, wicked, you know, death and punishment and crucifixion, how could he punish somebody else for the sins of people? And even in some of the passages in Ezekiel that I was reading, and I taught this the last few weeks, that even the people back then were saying, you're punishing us, God, because of the sins that our fathers committed. And if you remember... I think I titled that Sour Grapes. But if you remember, because they were saying, our teeth are on edge because our fathers ate grapes. That's what they were saying. You know, we're being punished for it. And that parable was going around in the day of Ezekiel. And he said, God said, no, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. I'll hold every person accountable. Okay. Doesn't that seem to contradict that all the sins of the world would then be upon Jesus and the liberal scholars, theologians said, they rejected that. They rejected the atonement, which you can't reject, okay? You should not do that. And they said, God, it's unjust for God to punish his son because of the sins of other people. But Jesus did what we see as substitution, paying the price for somebody else. We hear stories in humanity, I, I, just in the news. I read one not too long ago, where, or heard one, where a, a father was. They were, they were, they got caught in a storm in the rushing water, which is dangerous if you're like in a flood waters on the highway and you're driving in this hurricane conditions. And it was a story where a father was in the water and they were getting washed away. Maybe it's one I heard about, even they were out in a boat somewhere. True story, though, but I heard it somewhere <laughs> shared on, like, some television or radio show or read it. And as they were getting, they were caught in the water, and they were floating down real far. There was a part, a point where uh, the father probably could have swam to shore. And he had his young boy with him. And the young boy was scared, obviously. And he, at a certain point, that river was going to, that waterway was going to go out to, a, to the, to, I guess, into the big body of water. I'm, at this point, I'm forgetting the whole thing. But the father uh, stayed with the son. He was holding his young son because the young son uh, was so scared. So they both drowned. And they both died. And so in Christ becoming man, contrary to the liberal theologians who said that's such a wicked thing, if you remember, I quoted the other day the story I like a lot, when they were questioning Jesus about all types of things in the gospel. 
And it says they tried to catch him in his words. They tried to catch him, you know, they, they was, none of it was sincere. It's all manipulation. And at the end of the little interchange, he says, I have a question for you. He said, the Messiah, Christ, whose son is he? And he's asking the bright, knowledgeable people, you know, the Pharisees and the lawyers and the Sadducees, these were all the ones questioning him. And they knew scripture. Is he the son of David? Now, Jesus is referring to himself. And they would agree. And he said, but then how does David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And Jesus said, if the Messiah is the son of David, then how does David call him Lord? And they could not answer him, and they did not ask him any more questions after that. But he was getting to the heart of that. He's saying, why, how could it be just David in the spirit was prophesying okay, in the Psalms. And Jesus was before, a, before Abraham was, I am. He was always with the Father. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And the Word became man and dwelt among us. He was in the, he made the world, he was in the world, and the world knew him not. And so, it's just, it's right. It's not something that's a wicked thing that Jesus would die for the sins of the world because God himself, died for the sins of the world. Now, theologically, some of the Reformed people, this is why they get into big names. I don't want to do that, okay? Did that, did that part of the nature of Christ, which was deity, did that part die? Okay, that part didn't die, technically, theologically, but gee, we, get, we get lost in that. And the point I want to make is Jesus was God in the flesh, and that's what made it not a wicked thing. That was like the man holding his son, and he didn't want to let him go in the water. That was God taking the uh, paying the price. That it, so in the mind, the way I would see it, in the mind of the liberal scholars, who thought somebody dying for somebody else, sort of like God picked somebody and said. You die for everybody. And like the person went, oh, I don't want to do it. That's a misreading of the Garden of Gethsemane. That's a misreading of the struggles. And so it's just in the sense of God did it. God said, I'll die for the people. And in order for that to take place, Christmas Day, you see, today this day is born to us a Savior, Christ. He will save his people from this sense. So God became man, and he did it uh, to identify with us. And so we have not a high priest, Jesus, who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. So the fact that he walked and did this, and I had no plan on doing th this experiment, and I would have felt, I've never done it before this many days in the car, <coughs> on the street. I've not been, I, I've been out, and then you find different places, and you, uh, when I was in New York and I did the first uh, interview, it's not the first homeless guy in New York City I ever saw, but that was the first time I talked to a person, but there were, I was going to give Jerome the five dollars, I put it in St. Patrick's uh, offering when I went to the Mass, the noon Mass, but then as I walked throughout the city that day, I, you know, you'll always see homeless people, and gr thankfully it's not real cold, or else it'd be, it would be very difficult. But I figured, oh, I already gave the five to St. Patrick's, but maybe I'll give a dollar or two to some of these other people. And there was a lady was walking to Central Park on Madison Avenue, and there was a lady, because when you get out of St. Patrick's, it's either Madison, but it's a street right there when you get out of St. Patrick's, and it takes you right down to Central Park. I've done it before. And so there was a lady sitting there, homeless, just like others you see. And I I passed her up because I was walking, I've walked past a few of them that day. And then I stopped at the light and I thought, 
oh, let me give this lady the dollar because she had a cup out. And But when I turned around, I didn't realize there were two other women, um, maybe Christian ladies, and they were kneeled down next to her saying, being nice to her and saying, oh, honey, you got to get, and they helped her. And I didn't know these other two women were doing that. And I didn't turn around to put the money in just because they were doing that out of, like, guilt. I wanted to do it. I said, oh, let me do this. And, you know, I asked a few people. Uh, I don't ask a lot of directions, but sometimes when I'm walking like that, because I'm not Googling things, I'll just stop somebody and say, look, I'm heading to Empire State. And I asked the black cop. I said, isn't the Empire State building right there? He said, yes, it's 34th Street going that way. And But some of the people, the c civilians... They're very leery when I ask, and I'm wondering, I'm, I'm sure some of them are New Yorkers. And one man, he's probably about my age, but maybe looked a little different, you know, uh, and he's on his phone. And I, I was nice, you know, I said, look, I'm heading at that point. I said, I'm going to Central Park. I said, and I believe it's that way because I was coming back from the U.N. And if you know your bearings, but it's cloudy, so you can't see where the sun uh, east, west, and sometimes it'll have a sign that says Hudson River that way, <coughs> and New York <coughs> is pretty easy to navigate, Manhattan. It's not hard, because once you realize, okay, this is east, this is north, this is, you can make all the spots, and I had it right when I said, because this man was also a little hesitant, and like almost scared, I said, oh, I'm going to Central Park, you think it's that way, and at first he was scared, and he said, uh, he thought it was the other way. But then he saw I was kind of nice, and then he Googled it for me, but he was a little shaken. And then I, I was right, it was the other way. And I noticed that uh, I guess people have that, their fear, you know, is somebody going to rob me or whatever, but I've not seen any of that, you know. So we identify with humanity ourselves. We do that. That's that's an aspect of us. And I just felt this was good to do, this little experiment. So we'll have these little videos. I'm trying to write a little journal. And so today, Christmas Day, I want to bless everybody. I'm going to see if I could find a place. It would be cheating if I did another hotel room right now. You know, I checked on Wi-Fi uh, my balance, and it sh my bank balance... It's about, I have about $300 cash until payday. So if I had any big expense, I don't have credit card anymore. I canceled it because uh, I'm paying it off. And in order to get a deal to pay that card off, it was a uh, Visa card or whatever. I, they said, you got to cancel. You can't use it. I said, yes, I don't want to use it. I did that a month or so ago in Texas, a few months. So you don't have that extra if you need it. But I checked the balance yesterday, and I think I had a little over 300, and I thought it was lower. I don't get paid until the end of the month. Today's Christmas, so the last day of the month that night, my my uh, retirement check goes in direct deposit. But I looked, because I, I got one night in a hotel, which was $80, and that, that was the day I t took the shower and all. And I did not see that charge anywhere. And it wasn't a pending charge, and it wasn't that was three nights, two nights ago. So I thought, I, I, there's no charge. Now, maybe it'll show up later, but normally, if it didn't go through yet, it would say pending on your online Wells Fargo account. And there was no charge for that $80. So maybe, I don't know, maybe they saw um, all my little fireman stuff. They saw my badge when I checked in, though. They didn't ask nothing. I opened my wallet and... So maybe they just, you know, gave me a break. I don't know. So, but this is a good time to do this little experiment. And so today we'll see what, uh, if I can sneak in on the highway at the rest stops, I could shave real fast. I have mouthwash. I bought mouthwash because I can't really brush. So I'll use the mouthwash. And it's early. And we'll. It's about, it's about 4.30 in the morning right now. And so... This is Christmas Day, but unto us this day in the city of David, a Savior is born, Christ the Lord. And so today, we rejoice today when you get this video, because that's, that, that's the miracle of the Incarnation. 
That's the miracle of it. That God became man. He took, and then he took the sins of the world upon himself. So let's remember that one today. The Lord, I, will, I don't have my, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you all peace. From North Bergen, Christmas Day, for posterity for the future videos. God bless everybody.